The word NATO is a lie. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Not as, not, this is definitely not any longer true. NATO is the military alliance in the world. The biggest military alliance history had ever seen. Thousands of people took to the streets in Madrid on Sunday, June 26, against the NATO summit which began in the city on June 28. Protesters called NATO a threat to global peace and demanded its dissolution. The organizers stated that close to 30,000 people participated in the protest. They also raised slogans against US military bases in Spain and demanded their removal. The protest was organized by a set of groups including the Communist Youth, which is the youth wing of the Communist Party of Spain, as well as Platform for Peace, World Federation of Democratic Youth, No Cold War, among others. The organizers also held a two-day peace summit in Madrid on June 24th and 25th, at the conclusion of which a joint declaration was issued asserting that NATO is a serious threat to world peace, having left a trail of destruction from Yugoslavia to Afghanistan. Why they are doing this? Why NATO is spending 60% of all the military budgets of the world, 60% of 2 trillion, this is more than 1 trillion US dollar per year. And you know, hunger, sovereignty, climate problems, all these problems are not facing. So why they are doing this? And for me, the main reason is that we have a tectonic change of the international power structure. We have losing powers in the world and we have new powers which are upcoming and want to be more, indep more independent, more strong, accepted in the world. The powers which are reducing their influence in the world is above all the United States of America. Today, NATO has become a huge axle in the wheel of this kind of global military industrial complex that's been controlled essentially by the US empire uh, in its different reinventions for the purpose of a kind of full spectrum domination, um, driven of course by its ferocious appetite for you know, economic control and economic hegemony. Uh, it's a big money maker, as you all know. War in the military is a big, big money maker. And so the U.S. wants to keep turmoil going for its military industrial complex. The joint declaration demanded the dissolution of NATO, claiming that it violates the UN Charter and is intensifying a new Cold War against China and Russia. It also underlines that NATO is acting against progressive governments throughout the Global South and encouraging a global arms race which goes against the real needs of people, education, health, housing, social security and an effective energy policy. It's not critical to the security of Europe, in my opinion, that, Na that Ukraine be a part of NATO. I mean, how many NATO countries are there? 30 something? 30. 30. Yeah, and they're right here, except the one, is there one nation outside of Europe that's a member of NATO? Colombia. Colombia. Where the hell is that? Oh, pardon. <laughs> Where is Colombia? <laughs> it's in Latin America, for God's sakes. A, a place that I don't think has anything to do with European security, but it certainly has something to do with the U.S. unilateral war on nations in Latin America that don't do what the United States say to, like, Colum uh, like Venezuela right next door. NATO is certainly being used as a prop uh, for U.S. imperial interests all over the world and trying to get uh, first partnerships with the four major countries in, in Asia that will then become a part of NATO. That's the next expansion will be there. And then in terms of their actual like qualitative role on the continent, we've seen increasingly, and it's so apparent, that's the sad part, it's so apparent that the US military operates not only to provide you know, advantages to the United States and its you know, ruling elite, but it also functions with the armies of NATO countries like France um, as a guarantor of various Western corporate interests. The biggest uh, foreign military base outside of the NATO countries is in Niger, which is a U.S. drone base that conveniently is located next to France's uh, foreign military base in Agadez, which is very close to uh, one of the biggest uranium deposits. 
And this uranium deposit, I still find it like astronomically depressing that the uranium generated from this one or two mines from this one town are able to power one in three, one in three French light bulbs. One in three. Meanwhile, the populations of Niger, the people of Niger, it's around, and this is a generous one, a generous figure, one in seven have access to electricity. That's not guaranteed, but have access of some kind. The NATO summit is scheduled for three days, June 28th to 30th in Madrid. Apart from its organizational issues, the 30-member transatlantic military alliance will also focus on the war in Ukraine and the membership bid of two new countries, Finland and Sweden. On June 29, the two countries signed an agreement which will pave the way for their membership in NATO and lead to the further expansion of the organization. And we should not forget that the European Union has their own military interests. The European Union and Ukraine is the best example for this is on one side following the US rules and US guidelines, but on the other side they also want to be a European Union military superpower with own interest above all in Africa, saving the resources which we were taken for more than 500 years from this continent and the enlargement of the military infrastructure and the military budgets also in Europe is to develop the European Union as a military superpower. Apart from Madrid, protests were held in different cities across Europe, including in London, where thousands took part. More such protests are scheduled globally in the coming days. Fearing further protests against the NATO summit in the country, the Spanish government issued a blanket ban on all protests until June 29th, citing security reasons.